Hello, I'm here to introduce today the QCX Mini, new version of the QCX and um, I'm just going to try and keep this video short because very tired um, as you can see, haven't shaved in a while, a few other things have uh, not happened either The QCX Plus was a successor to the very popular original QCX shown here in the Bamatech enclosure from Germany and was intended to make the packaging larger and more easily more easy to experiment on uh, easier to build for people who uh, found the original one a bit compact and to provide the very nice case and some additional um, connectors on the back there for PTT and, and for CAT the computer interface and so this has been very popular as well but some people had felt that it was a little bit too big and preferred the original form factor so because of that now we've come up with the QCX Mini which is basically the same as the QCX Plus, but with a much smaller form factor. It's got the same game control, the same tuning knob, the same two buttons to control the menu system. The connectors are all the same, so you've got power here, and the uh, paddle and audio connectors there, and on this side, CAT and PTT, and the RF for the antenna. The BNC connector here is a higher quality all metal BNC connector which is also quite a bit shorter than the original uh, BNC connector on the original unit. So this is really tiny, um, the weight is just over 200 grams, the dimensions uh, 95 millimeters by 63 millimeters and 25 millimeters deep. So I'm going to not talk about the features because the features are all exactly the same as the original QCX and the QCX Plus um, with the exception that this has a yellow green display and so you can actually switch off the display with a double click of this button here um, not very easy to do when it's facing you but there you can see if I double, double click it the uh, display can be controlled on and off there's also a menu item uh, for controlling the display as well. That's here in the other menu and so you can control the backlight from there. That's for power saving and um, with the backlight off there's quite a considerable power saving. The original uh, QCX consumed 112 milliamps on receive at 12 volts. The QCX mini with the backlight off consumes 58 milliamps so it's just over half the power consumption with the backlight off and it's completely readable in daylight and in sunshine too. So I'm going to open up the QCX Mini and show you how it all fits together inside. The first thing to do is to remove the two knobs, um, just a small grub screw on each one. So uh, these are the same knobs used on the QCX Plus. Now I'm going to remove the power now you can see there are four screws holding the end panels on here and I need to remove those screws now. And now you can have a look in the end panel here and uh, this is from the power connector side, the left side of the radio. You can see the two PCBs inside stacked together. There's an 11 millimeter spacing between these two PCBs. And now you can just remove the bottom panel like that. And you'll see the main PCB inside. As you can see, a lot of uh, SMD components here on the bottom side of the board. The radio has SMD components on both sides of the board in order to save space and quite a few through-hole components too on the top side. You'll notice also that I did not remove the uh, nut from the BNC connector here. That's not necessary in the disassembly of the radio. Next I need to remove four nylon screws. You'll see there are five here but I removed these four. I do not remove this one.
Once I've removed those four screws, the two boards simply pull apart and disconnect like that. And you can see the main circuit board from the top side. Um, the lower circuit board, which is in fact the upper circuit board from when looked at from the top, simply slides out of the PCB along the rails in the, in the PCB here. So it just slides out like that. So starting with the top board, the top board really just contains the LCD module here and the contrast adjustment potentiometer. There's a transistor up here which is involved with switching the backlight on and off. This cutout area here is where the controls circuit board fits through and you'll see the board shape exactly matches the cutout here so that it fits through. The reason for that of course is that when it's slid into the enclosure um, you wouldn't be able to slide it into the enclosure if the knobs were fitted to the board here because you, you wouldn't be able to slide them into the holes. So those are, those are mounted on the bottom side of the board. A rather nice feature of this is that the adjustments are all here in the same place and labelled on the top PCB so that when you've put the controls PCB onto the main board you can adjust all those controls very easily and so there's a bandpass, the bandpass filter adjustment is through this hole here, the trimmer capacitor directly under the hole and this cutout here um, has the space to access the three multi-turn trimmer capacitors and you'll see that even when I've put the main board on, uh, the, the top PCB on, as you do during adjustment, you can still access those controls for making the adjustments. So that's a very neat feature and actually makes the adjustment easier. This small PCB that contains the controls is actually uh, 1.6 millimeters higher than the LCD PCB and that's achieved by a small spacer here which is just a cut out piece of PCB material and this is fixed on using this uh, single screw here so if I remove this screw you'll see that I can now unplug that controls board there's a 2x4 pin header between the two boards and that just contains the rotary encoder and the gain control and the two buttons here Now we can have a quick look around here on the main PCB. So you can see here is the 28-pin the, uh, Atmega 328 processor chip, the same chip which is used in the QCX and the QCX Plus, and the same firmware. The firmware is completely compatible with all three versions of the QCX. And it's a removable 28-pin DIP package, so you can buy the upgrade chips if you need to or replace the chip. Uh, just by removing it from its socket, the same as you would on a QCX Plus or a QCX. Over here we have the transmit uh, low-pass filter and the power amplifier here consisting of the three BS170s and the MPS751 keying transistor, again bolted against the fl with their flats against the PCB, just exactly the same as they are on, on the QCX Plus as heat sinking. This particular QCX Mini has the TCXO option installed. Uh, this TCXO was designed for the QCX Plus and the board layout has been maintained such that the TCXO is also compatible with the QCX Mini. If you did not want to install the TCXO option and purchase that, there's a 27 MHz crystal supplied which just fits in here uh, in place of that small PCB. Here is the infamous uh, T1 bandpass filter and phase splitting transformer and the trimmer capacitor for the bandpass filter. And the four uh, quadrature sampling detector capacitors are actually through-hole capacitors. The reason for that is for microphony. The SMD components uh, suffer somewhat from that. And it was found that certain crucial capacitors ought to be replaced by through-hole through -hole types. All the op-amps here, as you can see, are SMD, as are all the resistors and capacitors, apart from the few critical ones. Um, there's an SMD voltage regulator here, 5 volt voltage regulator, and you can see here the three adjustments for the IQ balance, the low and the high audio phase shift adjustments.
Now, all the QCX mini kits are supplied as standard with this daughter card PCB, which is for the micro STX SSB transceiver modification. Uh, this modification is not uh, supported by QRP Labs, but the PSPCB has been provided to make it easy to make this modification if you wish. There are certain zero ohm resistors here and a couple of points where you need to wire and a few component changes, but almost all of the changes are components that you would install on this PCB. So that's useful for enthusiasts of the micro SDX transceiver modification. And this daughter card PCB is designed to fit into this area of the PCB here. Um, once those cutoffs have been filed down properly, it will fit nicely in, in that area. The kit as supplied comes in a bag like this. And inside this bag, you will find a number of smaller bags containing uh, the PCBs and the components. These are the two static proof bags containing the PCBs themselves. Um, this is how the main PCB looks before it's all been soldered together. Um, often there's a strip down the outside here, by the way, which is just the leftover from the manufacturing process. And that's quite easily removed uh, just with a small pair of pliers or a wire cutter or something. And then the top PCB, which is designed to have the LCD module bolted to it, actually contains inside it the PCB for the controls as well as the micro SDX modification PCB here. And these two spacers are used to elevate this controls PCB 1.6 millimeters higher than the LCD module PCB. Um, that's important just for having the buttons and the controls all line up at the right height relative to the case. Other than that, we have uh, two small bags of components, which are all the through hole components, and this pink bag here, which contains the LCD module. The low pass filter components for the band that you ordered are supplied in a separate bag. So I'll just put this back together again and uh, starting off with the controls PCB which just plugs into the main board like that and the screw bolts it together. like that. Now I need to take the uh, enclosure, the top half of the enclosure, and just slide the LCD module into the tracks and place it down face down like that and insert the top. And this requires usually a little bit of wriggling to get the board to go through but it firmly slots in place like that. And then it's a matter of uh, putting the four screws back in. And finally the bottom of the enclosure just slots on neatly like that. And I will place the end cap in position. Then start putting the screws back in. Then the final step, we just put the controls back on, remembering to not let them sink down all the way onto the shaft uh, because then they won't turn easily. So leave a gap of half a millimetre or something between the enclosure and the bottom of the knob. Like that, so they turn freely. And then provided we haven't messed anything up, everything should still work. So there you have it, the QCX Mini. Um, completely the same in terms of function, performance, 
and features as the original QCX and the QCX Plus, but in a much smaller size. Um, a really, really cute little size. You'll love the way it all goes together. The QCX Mini will be on sale from the 3rd of December 2020 at 1900 Zulu hours. The price will be $55 for the QCX Mini, which is the same price as the QCX Plus, and $20 for the aluminium enclosure. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the kit.